So here we go. So basically, as I said, uh, we're a true carbon capture technology. Uh, most people in the industry call themselves carbon capture, but they're actually CO2 captures. They capture the gas, oxygen, and carbon. We only capture the carbon itself. We release the O2, as I said to you before. Yeah. So if we go through this slide, um, we, we can go over basically um, what we've invested in the, in the company to date. As I said, 1995, it was conceived in 2001. We had our first prototype. And obviously with any prototype, there's bottlenecks, there's problems. You have to work those out. It takes a lot of money to get to a technology that is trouble free. So we've spent to date $45 million US on the technology. Um, as I said, it was an, it's an air purification technology. Uh, it's basically on the, and uses no chemicals. If you consider water a chemical, then it uses one, one chemical water. Um, um, it's one tenth the CapEx. So a hundred billion dollar plant is about a hundred million dollars to us. So one tenth the change. So a okay. huge, massive decrease in CapEx. There's no back pressure in our technology because it's a flow through, as I said. So if your pipe diameter is, is four inches in diameter, you just make your opening four inches and you have a complete flow through, no back pressure. So no compromise on the combustion process that you're, you're running, okay? Uh, we don't have any pipelines to deal with. We have no compression, Car uh, the, the, the carbon, we can compress the carbon and we can easily ship it to anywhere we want and then process it further into any, any value added product. We're not, most of these technologies have to use that CO2 for one technology, for one specific product. We don't have those constraints. So what you have basically is uh, if, we, if we move forward, you basically have all these advantages to ours. Now we also capture particulate. Now, most of these processes, if there is particulate in them, they have to have secondary, again, secondary processes that add to the cost and, and these are step processes. SO2 needs a certain technology. Particulate needs a, a, a typically a, an electrostatic particulate uh, ca uh, capture technology. Um, and then they need a CO2, uh, another uh, method of capturing the CO2. Again, ours is all combined into one. Um, we have no, uh, again, no chemicals. Uh, one tenth the CapEx of chemical absorbent technologies. Um, we have no underground sequestering, so we don't bury our CO2, we utilize it, okay? We utilize the carbon part. It has no pipelines, um, no compressors, again, and then, uh, and then what, what, what is result of all of that, because of the uniqueness of our approach, is we're one thirtieth the amount of power of chemical CCS at, and no thermal required, okay? So that's where we go. Now, here's a process we are on U18 and U19. That's what we call our, our pods. And you can see them on the left there. If you, you can make out a U18 on that, on, in the yellow on the left. And these are basically, they look like flying saucers, basically, with tails on the bottom of them. That's what they look like. Okay. And what you see in the second uh, frame here under skimmer material retriever, that's actually the material that comes out of a coal fired plant. That is all the particulate all the accelerators. So accelerants are, are carbons that aren't burned in the process. So no combustion is 100% clean. So there are accelerants that can be collected by our process and they can be reburned, increasing the BTU of that plant, making it much more efficient. Now, the third picture you see there are our, our carbon fullerens that we discussed. And those are very light carbon uh, um, um, basically they're, they're as light as feathers. When you play with them, they just float everywhere. You have to wear a mask because they are, they, they, they're just apps. They're lighter than, than the air, these fullerens, but they're extremely versatile, at, um, um, carbon atoms, and they have thousands of uses and more coming every day. Um, the last slide you see there is the particulate, uh, and the long chain carbons that we capture. Again, you can take those and reintroduce them into the combustion chamber and reburn them and recollect them and just continue that cycle over and over and over again. 
okay? Um, so we get into the next um, um, a slide and we say, we, we talk about what we're collecting. So as you see, we've, to date, we've identified 15 fullerites. So fullerites are typically fullerites, but they're all mixed together. They're not individual atoms. They're, they're, they're C60, C70, and, and they call them allotropes. So allotropes are multiple, uh, an element that has multiple configurations. And that's why we call them fullerites and numerous carbon, long, uh, uh, short carbon chains. So anything under 30 atoms is considered a short carbon chain. Uh, volatile organic compounds typically are, are short co compounds. And those can be, again, reburned, or they can be used in secondary processes if they're refined and, and uh, through the refining process, you get a concentration of that material. You can sell it in other, other applications. Um, and then you see obviously the standard graphene that we can collect and, um, and then the rest of it are buckyballs. So what you see in that diagram is what we call our scaled up version. Uh, our design is being scaled up right now so that we can, uh, instead of being limited to a, about five megawatt size system, we can go upwards of 300 megawatts. And we would build these in factories, ship them to the location, stack them, so no chimney would be required for new builds. No longer you'd see a chimney. The chimney's incorporated in these stacks. And as the, chim as the emissions go through, they are processed and then on the slits on the top you see there, in the blue, those lines, that's your, your output, your oxygen and your nitrogen. Yeah, different, different looking smokestack. Yeah, very different. Um, so give you an idea on a, on a traditional coal fired or even a, a power plant, a gas fired power plant, you could be spending uh, on a single chimney, 55 to $60 million to build that chimney. That's and how much would it cost to build this plant? On a 65 megawatt plant, um, our system to treat those gases, you'd be looking close to about $40 million. So cheaper than what it would cost to build the chimney. Wow. And you, and you now, get all this, this stuff you collect that you can sell as well and make some money off of that. That's correct. So if we go, if we go to the next slide, you can see our, how, how we devise our technology. Whereas most people are sequestering the CO2 in location and they have to process it there. And typically they're, they're, they're manufacturing one product from it if at all, sometimes they're just sequestering it, putting it in the ground and hoping for the best. But what we do is we collect it. We collect the fullerens, five to 9% of the fullerens are collected in the initial process. We then compact it for transportation into bricks. We take those bricks, we treat them with high pressure and heat in a furnace, and then we produce 75, out of that material, 75 to 95% are now fullerens. And those fullerens can be sold into space uh, companies and industries, can pharmaceuticals for drug delivery, industrial processes for sin fuels and plastics. And then obviously the green, we can put them in, in, in for batteries. Carbon fullerens are used in batteries. They're used in solar panels. They're used in making cars. Carbon graphite is a great example. You can take a car instead of uh, producing aluminum and digging the, the bauxite up from the ground or the steel, the, the iron ore from, this, from the ground. You can use carbon as your, as your frame of your car. And, car, and carbon graphite is 42% lighter than aluminum. So now you see flying cars. What's the natural progress is to go and, and build carbon graphite bodies because it's so much lighter. So these are all the processes that we can offer to a client. We're not restricted with one material. We can actually take that material and sell it into numerous industries with no restriction. Therefore, we have an, an incredible value added service for our product compared to other people. There's only so much soap you can use, right? So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's where we come into it. So right now we have 11 technical and engineering staff here in Canada. Uh, we have one patent 
two pending patents, and three more in writing. Um, we have a US subsidiary with five technical people. Um, we also are in talks uh, with uh, uh, people in Japan for Fukushima, because right now Fukushima has a big issue with water, radioactive water. And as they're trying to cool these reactors that have melted down, they could continue to collect radioactive water and they have nowhere to put it. So they're building massive storage tanks and they're putting the water in these massive storage tanks and they're starting to run out of room. So what they're talking about is releasing some of this radioactive water into the Pacific. So we believe that we can separate that radioactive material out of the water and allow them to process that water, which would be a, a deal breaker for the nuclear energy. Uh, group out there. It would allow nuclear energy to have a whole new life. Um, so that is one of the technologies because we, because what we're doing is we're literally breaking apart those bonds, right? And that's what you need to do with nuclear, with, with water. You need the, the, the isotope, the radioactive isotope is clinging to that water molecule. And if you can separate those, then you may be able to filter out that radioactive material or at least make it less radioactive. Okay, so these are all the things. Now you see transportation. This is a purely physical, uh, um, there's no physical size limit to our technology. We can build it in, as an air conditioner size or, a, or even as small as a, as a tower on a, on a desktop computer. Really? So you can, you can have, literally have home applications as well. That's right. The so mobile we, applications. We, again, as I said, pure air purifier, right? So air purifiers are typically small. So we can fit this into hospitals. And again, once we have this data, we're actively going to go after that market and sell it into that market. Now, if we also can prove that we can accelerate growth plant life by balancing the air in that greenhouse and, and, and allowing that plant to grow without any fungus or mold attacking it. So all of its energy is now being dedicated to growth. And that's the difference. We're not force feeding anything. You know, anything will grow when you force feed it, just like a person will grow if you force feed them. So we're avoiding all that. We're bringing neutrality back to nature with our technology. It does not take any more out of the atmosphere than it needs to. So it is about, it's, it's, it, it's based on, uh, it's based on a natural occurrence in the atmosphere. It's based on, um, um, lightning and lightning. If you have ever gone through a lightning storm, after that storm, you notice how fresh the air is, mm -hmm. how, how great it smells. Yes. This is the process we've mimicked in nature. This is what our CTO has developed. Okay, so that's why our energy level is so low because we're mimicking nature. Nature's had three billion years to develop itself into the lowest energy state. And we're just mimicking exactly what nature's already done, but we've brought that technology in, in, uh, and brought it in, into a, a, a human form factor that's able to exploit it, okay? Yeah. So our, our build-up and manufacturing facility in Lindsay is now building a unit. Um, it's a fairly large facility. It's a fabrication facility. Um, and that's where we're gonna be building these in Canada. We also have Progress um, Energy out in uh, Saskatchewan. They are an oil and gas fabrication company. They are contracted to build these units once we get started, uh, um, building more and more of them. And then we also have in Edmondsville, Indiana, our subsidiary, which is again, gonna be for our US subsidiary and a US business is gonna be building them out of there. So we have three facilities right now, either contracted or set up ready to receive orders as these orders come in to build these systems. And as I said, we're talking about 40 foot containers that are built in a factory setting, shipped to location and, and commissioned at location. So that's our business model. We can scale as many containers as we need or as little amount of containers as we need, okay? And basically that's our website and then questions. And we consider ourselves the gold standard in carbon capture. I should say the black standard in carbon. 
the, the, the to, <laughs> to mimic carbon, but I, I call it the gold standard. Yeah, well, I really like what you said about the biomimicry piece, right? Nature's figured a lot of this stuff out, and it, and it's just for us to just replicate that. So it sounds like you you figured out a way to replicate a really interesting process. And and right now I hear these models are fairly big, and and the um, the air conditioner home units is that something you see in the near future? I get you can bring the technology to that, but is that something? What do you, are, do you see jumping to that market soon or is that just something, an idea? For uh, that's our U.S. subsidiary is going to be jumping into that market. That's why they're doing the BSL-2 lab testing. They want to get, get, some, get, get some data, get some verification from what we already know from overseas testing. Uh, we've had multiple testimonials from hospitals, um, from individuals, from uh, institutions that the technology has profound implica uh, implications for, for human health. It's relief people, it, it, it's people who suffer from mold or from allergies. It's relieved their symptoms completely. It's allowed them to live full lives. Um, we've also had some other indications uh, for um, accelerated uh, after a heart attack or a stroke, accelerated um, um, recovery from those uh, four factors. Um, uh, what one instance where they studied the, 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 the scarring of the heart after a, a heart attack, the heart becomes less flexible. Um, the muscle becomes more, more tight and, and very, and not uh, uh, able to, to, to pump. And this technology has shown that it, in, in during recovery, that the heart is able to actually recover, not to its full, full precondition uh, state, but much higher state. Of recovery. Um, so again, these are all unproven, um, except for our carbon capture. Um, so unproven in the West, not in the East. So we're now bringing that to, uh, to this technology here, and we are now actively testing to these to these standards to try to build a, a, a you know a, a regulatory path to as far as the, 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 um, uh, the, the virus, bacteria, um, and also the, the growth factor for, 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 for plants. Um, the carbon capture, we, we, we don't have to prove that. We already know we've done it. We, we've got lots of data, lots of um, pro projects that we've already implemented, none in North America, but hardly any technologies have been built into, in, in uh, in, in North America, very few CCS projects. There's maybe 30 CCS projects worldwide, 30. So, um, you know, this is a very new science, a very new technology for everybody. And there's a lot of people who have some great technology out there. The, the biggest difference is from what I've seen is our technology is only electrical. It doesn't use any chemical. And because of that, it's extremely efficient, ex extremely economic to build in the place and to operate. 